Good morning, Apollo! Oh, that's a sad good morning. Good morning, Apollo! Did you have lunch yet? Wow, you're pretty awake. Okay. How many of you have ever been told you're not good enough? so hard, you're not even going to make it. <laughs> All right. How many of you have had one person that believes in you? One person at least. <laughs> one person. Clap <laughs> once if you hear me. Clap twice. Three times.
the first person in my family that was going to get the opportunity to graduate from high school. And guess what? I did it. The first in my entire family. And there, I went on and went to college. Without being able to qualify for a whole lot of scholarships, it was not easy. And people kept telling me, no la vas a armar, no vas a poder, you can't do that. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't. Well, I have this one person specifically in my life. How many of you guys have a person who always tells you, yes, you can. Keep doing it. Keep working hard. You're going to make it. So that person to me was my yaya, my, my grandma. And my grandma would come and visit me from Mexico every single year, my family and I. Well, I never grew up being able to go to Mexico, right? Because I couldn't come back. So I was not able to go to Mexico until two years ago. I went to Mexico only because I managed to get a permit through that guy. Only because my abuela was incredibly sick. My yaya was my pride and joy. My yaya had a third grade education, but if you talked to her, you would have thought she was a doctor. She used to love to read. She would read day in and day out. I would buy her books, and she would tell me that she would read them three times because she wanted to first rush through the book. Then she wanted to go back and understand everything that she missed. Then finally, she would read it again to just get the whole concept. Mi yaya, hubieras creído que era una doctora, pero no lo fue. I got to Mexico after 22 years of not being in that country. I didn't know where I was going. And I was going with a broken heart because I was going to see my abuela in the hospital. I walked into that hallway with my heart in my hands. I walked into that room to see my yaya not being able to speak to me anymore because she couldn't breathe. I spent eight days with my yaya in that hospital, sleeping on the floor beside her, only to watch her die in my hands. My dad was never able to see my yaya again because he wasn't able to go. And on the 14th of this November, my abuelo, my yaya's husband, went through the same thing. And because now I'm a permanent legal resident, I was able to go to Chihuahua to bury my abuelo. And my dad was not able to go. My dad's heart is a wreck because of a system that has divided. So to me, that means that the sacrifices that my parents have made mean the world to me. And I am here to carry on that legacy, to talk about those cultures that have made us who we are, regardless of where we come from. I grew up in the state of New Mexico, and my native brothers and sisters taught me the value of telling our stories, of being grateful for the land that we stand upon, to talk about culture and language and unity. And I went from being a six-year-old undocumented girl who pretended to be someone she was not to understanding the value of my culture, to walking the hallways of the White House. How many of you guys have dreams? Raise your hand. How many of you guys have ever had a dream come true? So you guys, I'm sure you've heard of the whole wording of when they call recipients of DACA, they call them dreamers, right? Have you heard that? The dreamers, the dreamers, the dreamers. All of these dreamers are people like me who got to this country when we were little without a social security. So every time that they would call me a dreamer or she's this dreamer, 
I would say, you know what? I'm sorry, but I'm not a doer. I'm a doer. I do stuff. Even when you tell me I'm not going to make it, I do not I do not care. So every single one of you, regardless of what anyone tells you, has the ability to do whatever in the world you want. And you do not let anybody tell you any differently. Because every single one of you can succeed. Every single one of you has the potential to do so. And you know what the reality is? No, we do not start at the same place. That is, that's a myth. Because if my parents never got the opportunity to go to college, and my friend's parents did, we're not starting off at the same line. My friend has advantages. She can go to her parents and ask her for help. Ask her what a credit is. Where in my case, I would go home and I would teach my parents. How many of you guys help your parents understand what you do at school? Thank you. Give yourselves a round of applause. You're already teaching your family. You're empowering them. And you're helping them learn systems that they did not get the opportunity to be in. So you have a big responsibility already. And that responsibility should be your passion to go against whoever tells you you're not going to make it. Just like in 2015, I got this call. And they said, hi, can I speak to Cindy? And I said, yes, this is Cindy. And they said, Cindy, do you have any plans for Cinco de Mayo? And I said, no, I don't have any plans. And my mom was right there with me. And they said, well, you know, the Congresswoman from New Mexico, she wants to take, she wants to invite you as a guest of honor to the White House. I died, okay, legitimately, just crying. And I said, I can't go to the White House. I don't have a social security number. And they said, we're gonna take care of it. You're gonna be fine. Well, my mom was over here hyperventilating, telling me, absolutely not, we're not going. You're gonna be deported, are you crazy? And I said, no, mom. They said, I'm gonna be okay. Please, I have to do this. But I went. And it was fine, I'm still here. So I, I'll tell you, as I walked, I went through security, okay? The craziest security I've ever seen. It was a whole dog, and he went around me, passed through security, and we start going into this huge hallway, and I start walking. And the congresswoman is right next to me, and my legs are shaking, and I'm about to fall because my heart is coming out. And I look at the walls, and I see these pictures of these presidents whose stories and history I study at school, and I know and I keep looking, and I don't see any pictures of anyone that looks like me. And as much as that hurts, it empowered me, because I said, hey, if I'm here, this is only the beginning. And I'm gonna do my little piece to try to bring other people who look like me, other communities of color, other communities in need, to these places. I'm gonna take opportunities that were never given to my parents, to my abuelos, because they had to work so hard. I'm gonna do that. And guess what? Every single one of you is gonna have the opportunity to do that, even now. When a friend is struggling, help them out. You never know when that friend is gonna turn around and gonna tell you, hey, here you go. Here's my hand. I'm gonna help you get through this. How many of you doubt yourself sometimes? I doubt myself all the time, okay? So it's okay. How many of yourself, how many of you believe in yourself sometimes? Or all the time? Most. Okay, all right. So the other day they talked to me about the, the this idea of being empathetic to people. So being when somebody tells you a story, don't judge them. Wait a minute, because you're not walking in their shoes. And there's a difference between being empathetic and sympathetic. So being empathetic is truly under, trying to understand. And even if you don't know what to say, it's just telling your friend, I'm here for you, I have no words. And you're gonna be able to start changing your, the world around you. How many of you guys love your families? How many of you have friends who you love like family? 
How many of you will be first generation college students? Raise your hand. Will you be the first in your family to go to college? How many of you will be second generation to go to college? Clap once if you hear me. Twice. Three times. Four. I, you can count to four. Good. So, how many of you guys have ever done an activity called the Walk of Privilege? Okay. So, the Walk of Privilege is pretty interesting. I can be critical about it. But it's interesting. They, they, they put students or whoever participates on a line in a line. I've done this activity all throughout college. They put us on a line, and then they would, they would ask questions, right? So if you're the first in your family to go to college, take a step backward. If your parents went to college, take a step forward. They would just keep asking these questions. It ended up being that I was all the way in the back. And my more privileged friends were all the way in the front. And they said that that's, that's just how success happens. So the people in the front are more likely to, to have an easier path to success, and the people in the back are much less likely. So then they asked us, how does it feel, Sydney, to be all the way in the back? You know, and as creative as I was, I said, well, you know, this can be a great activity, you know. But I wouldn't be back here if your questions were different. So if you ask me, if you ask a question, how much culture do you have? How many languages do you know? Do you know more than one language? If the questions were different, I would be all the way in the front. But because I'm an immigrant and I am all these other things, I was all the way in the back. And because I'm a woman of color, I was in the back. You know what? I said, forget it because I'm going to forget that I was all the way in the back and I'm gonna walk right in the front because that's where we all belong. Because we all count. How many of you guys have heard of the census? So every 10 years, we get counted across the country. We get counted, okay? So our communities, many communities of color, could be harmed because they, sometimes they're not counted accurately. And that means that we don't get school, we don't get funding, we don't get money into our programs, things, you know, for our communities, and things that impact you. So at USHLI, we're working to make sure that every single one of you counts. That you count, that you count, that you over there count. It's like I told you. You guys have somebody who has believed in you, right? So that person is your positive interrupter. Look at the person right behind you. Give them a handshake. That's going to be the next governor of the state of Arizona. A round of applause for them, please. Thank you. Look at the person to your right. That's going to be the next president. Don't make eye contact. Oh, look at you. Yep, I can see you guys. I can see you. I can totally see you. All right, okay. Where's those hands? See, all the excitement is over here. What's going on? No breakfast today? No. So sad. All right, so I need somebody from this side of town. No volunteers? We got a lot of excitement going on this corner, por favor. ¿Cuál se va a animar? If you're volunteering someone, you're volunteering yourself. All right. <laughs> okay, right here. Angelina, what grade are you? 
Seventh, Angelina. Give a round of applause, please. Let's call her.
a call, whatever. Send, do it. Yes, very sweet. <laughs> Let's give your fellow uh, round make a round of applause. where I work, goes across the country and we only pick a handful of schools to go visit and do this at. And you all are the first ones in Tucson. So, so that this round, of this tour that we started yesterday, this is actually my first time in Tucson. I know, and I hope it's not my last time. And I've been with the, with the United States Hispanic Leadership Institute for three months. I'm from New Mexico, but I was recruited, so now I live in Chicago. We have a great conference every year in February. Who would like to go to that conference one day? Yep. Believe me, every one of you will want to go. So when you're in high school, you guys have to look us up. You have to look into our scholarships. We have scholarships for you to go to the conference. And every single one of you has the opportunity to do so. So look us up and do that. Because remember, it is our value and our culture and our grounding that's going to give us that strength to do that. Regardless of where you come from. And believe me, the pathways are not going to be easy. Because people, even now, people, there's still people that continue to tell me, don't do that, don't try that. But I do not listen anymore. I do not listen. So disconnect from those negative people and connect and be grateful for those that help you. So we have a little bit of a competition to do now because I, I go, so now that we go across the country, I tell the students, all right, I'm gonna put you up on my social media, which is national media, maybe up. If we, if you can answer this question, so my question is, what are you going to be, Apollo? You can guess, what are you going to be? I've been talking to you about being something. A what? A school? A good school? Okay, a good school, yes, uh-huh. What else? A smart student, okay, yes, 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 not the exact answer, right here. Powerful people, all right, that too, over here. A straight A school, okay. Back, a what? You're gonna be yourself, absolutely, but there's something else you guys are missing. Persevere, successful, not successful as well, but something else. Thank <laughs> you. 